to Dania Beach's water plant. Where does water come from? The, the sky. sewer. The sewer? No, no, no. That, I don't think that's where it comes from. Rain, groundwater, ocean. I'm really excited because I want to know how like they clean our water so that way you know, I could go home and I could tell my little brother how they do it. I want to learn how water is filtered and like what's all the common bacteria in water. It looks like you guys like take water and clean it or reduce it into fresh water. I'm expecting to see um, the different water plants and how it works. We want to show students uh, of all ages water treatment. Uh, water treatment is very important to us. Society doesn't develop without clean water. And we're lucky in South Florida that we have lots of availability of raw water supplies as well as the ability to treat that. But it's important to convey this information, especially to younger people, because they don't understand. Um, they just assume that water comes on as soon as the tap comes on, the water goes away as soon as we flush, and nobody really thinks about it beyond that. But these are huge, valuable assets that are in the ground. Uh, they're also assets that are going to require more maintenance and rehabilitation with time. So it's really important to make sure that people understand that. We're going to go pull water out of the ground. And the question is, can we drink it when we pull it out of the ground? No. Why not? We need to clean it. We need to clean it. There's bacteria. There's bacteria in it. Actually, we're going to go take a look at all that stuff, OK? So let's go see where the water comes from, shall we? Come on, let's go. This valve right here is on the raw water line it comes in. So Dania Beach, once upon a time, had wells on the site here, but they turned salty over time. So Dania Beach's wells are actually on the other side of I-95, and then the rest of their supply is out at Brian Piccolo Park in Cooper City. That's like 10 miles west. Here in South Florida, in order to allow us to live here, we put in all these canals. Those canals were installed starting in the 1930s all the way through the 1960s, in order to drop the groundwater level so we could live here. Do you guys realize that you're going downhill when you get on the other side of 95 going west? You're going downhill. You're going downhill towards the Everglades because the high ground in South Florida is this railroad track that's like a couple blocks away. I'm Ms. Backus. I am a science teacher at Awesome Olson Middle School. I also do the Eco Club. And I just think it's um, great to be able to bring my students out here to get an opportunity to see hands on um, what the water cycle looks like, the water plant, how the water is treated, and just to, to extend that learning for them is a great opportunity. This valve separates the two processes. This is a lime softening system. There's a lot of these in South Florida. This one was built in 1963, so it's been here a long time. There's a problem though. Water that's coming from the west being that it's part of the remnant Everglades, looks like iced tea. It's kind of colored. It has bacteria in it. In 2011, we built the second process, which is a nanofiltration slash reverse osmosis system. The first place the water goes is right here. This is bacteria that's growing on this thing. Okay. So this is groundwater, so it has a lot of calcium and stuff like that in it. We want to get some of that out. So we're going to mix with lime, and then we're going to let it settle. So I'm going to do a demonstration here. What do you see? Dirty water. You see water? It's yellow. What's happening to it? All the particles inside are sinking to the bottom. The particles are settling to the bottom. All right, now watch this. Clear, 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 clear. Nastiness. Yellow stuff at the bottom. How about that? That's nasty. What is that? That is the mixture of lime and the calcium that's in the water. We call that lime sludge. So what I just did with this is what's happening in this basin. We mix it together, it goes out underneath, it goes into this area on the outside. You'll notice that this is yellow, but that's clear, right? And then look at the stuff that's inside the, the troughs there. That's even cleaner. I didn't know that all the, the orange uh, film is like a bacteria, type of bacteria, and they clean all of it out. And it was just really interesting to see him uh, get the water in a cup 
and see all the sediment at the, at the bottom of the cup. Um, that was interesting to see how the students reacted to that. They had took iron and took the water that they just brung from the ground with all the calcium and bacteria and they put it on top of the iron and the calcium and bacteria sunk to the bottom. I thought that I thought that was rust in there, but come to find out it was actually lime that was supposed to um get the iron bacteria out of the water. There's stuff inside the water before they clean it and stuff. So it turns clear and then at the bottom the stuff sunk to the bottom like all the particles and germs. the mixing system and a clarifier, but it's not clear enough to drink. So what we do is we filter the water. So these things that are behind us here, there's four of them, those are filters, okay? They're just sand and they have some charcoal in them. The idea is to go remove all the little particles and to remove some of the organics. The filters are about five foot deep. If the water's moving vertically through the sand, what happens on the top of the sand? Get a bunch of stuff on top, right? Yeah. We call it schmutz decky. What? Exactly. It's a mixture of the particles that come over, of bacteria and other stuff, <laughs> and we got to get rid of it. So those troughs there are for backwashing the filters. We, back, we basically push water up from the bottom, and it comes up to the height of those troughs, and then all the schmutz decky goes in the troughs. And it goes over that pond over there. We try to recycle all the water we can on this site. We're gonna then chlorinate this water and we're disinfecting with bleach. All right, so should we go look at the other half of the process? Yes. Yes, all right. Let's go down those stairs right there and we're gonna go back to where we started, over there. calcium get into the groundwater? No. No dirt and animals. The limestone, right. You need high quality water, otherwise it causes the membranes to get really fouled. These are sand separators. The water comes in and the sand kind of rolls down here. And then you open up this valve, which will come out that pipe right there. As you can see, it's still dripping. That allows us to take water with no sand towards the membrane plant. The Everglades is a recharge area for the Biscayne Aquifer. It's the most productive aquifer in the world. And the good news is that it rains, and it rains in the Everglades, so all we have to do is wait for it to rain and we have water. So let's go to the next step. The sixth graders learn about the water cycle and earth space science, and so it's interesting to see how the rocks and the water, how they all relate to, together, and to make that connection for them. Because, you know, it's one thing to read it in a book, but when you're out here and you're looking at it and you, you ask questions that you didn't even know you had, and to see them excited about learning is, is just awesome. I was actually really surprised about how they put a little bit of chlorine in the water. Right here, these are chemical storage. So we're putting tiny amounts of chemicals in the water. But we're gonna bring the pH down and we're gonna put an anti-scalant so it makes the water slippery to help us with the membrane process. So we bring this above ground. You'll see these pipes that go ahead and add the stuff into it. This is actually a giant mixer right here. Then the pipe's gonna go down and it's gonna go inside that building over there. So we, should we go see what's inside the building? Yes! comes inside the building and it comes in this pipe right here. So we need to get rid of the silt and maybe some of the bacteria would be good, right? So we're going to use these cartridge filters. This is a cartridge filter. So this is what's inside. There's one of them open. You can see it's partially filled. The water has to push itself through this plastic into the center and it will remove a lot of stuff. A cleaner water will come off the back side. This is a membrane skid. So each one of these white tubes is a vessel. Inside the vessel are seven membranes. You know what newspaper looks like when you roll it up? Yeah. Okay, so imagine newspaper rolled up really tight, and then we have fiberglass on the outside and a cap. That's what the membranes are, okay? 
The membrane itself is basically a piece of paper that's really shiny and smooth on one side. The water pressure is going to push water through that piece of paper, but not the calcium. Okay, it has four stages, and what happens is, is the clean water comes off the first stage, and then the dirty water, the stuff that doesn't go through the membranes, comes back on the second stage. Half of that water gets recovered. Third stage is the dirty water. Fourth stage, which are the only plant in the world with four stages here, at the dirty water, we can get 96% of the total water that we put in back. We can only do that if the pH is perfect and these things are working. We can test every vessel, okay? It will also tell us how much concentrate that we're getting and how much permeate permeates the clean water. It tells us how much of that we're getting so that we can monitor this process. This skid produces a million gallons a day of water by itself. We can produce two million gallons because we have two skids here. We can monitor flow. We can monitor pressure. This is coming at about 125 PSI. I think it's excellent to actually see everything up, and up close. Even for myself, I've never actually been to a water plant. So as an adult, I'm learning a lot. So I'm sure uh, as teenagers uh, to learn it, you know, in your book versus actually seeing it live, it's just so different. And to actually feel, you know, the different filters that are part of the process, uh, learning about reverse osmosis, I think the experience is invaluable for the students. This plant has to use sulfuric acid so it can increase its pH level. They um, separate the water into four stages to make sure that it's all clean. Water is like gets uncontaminated. I didn't know that water would go through those tiny tubes, that the white tubes, and were how to move throughout the other ones. That was kind of cool. They purify the water so so it can be compacted into a nucleus. <laughs>
actually fine and clean to drink. Okay, um, so you don't have to worry about it. South Florida has pretty clean water. Dania Beach has a great facility. So don't worry about drinking tap water. If you're concerned, get a Brita or something like that just to kind of filter it out. We don't want to use water bottles ever. If you can avoid using a plastic water bottle, do it. I was also surprised that you can, that you can drink tap water because <laughs> I've always thought you can't drink tap water because it's toxic or something. I was surprised to hear that you can drink the water because so many times you hear boil the water. I personally buy, you know, plastic bottled waters, but here today I found out that it's actually um, not the best way to go, that it is actually healthier to drink tap water. So that was interesting. How many times do you guys think that you uh, flush the toilet in a day? Like five times. Five times, yeah. Um, so 5.1 times is the average amount of times that people uh, flush their toilet in a day. Who knows what the average gallons per flush a toilet uses? 1.5? Nope. 3.5 gallons per flush was the standard amount that a toilet used before 1994. Okay? And most toilets have not been replaced since then. If we're flushing five gallons per flush five times a day, that's 25 gallons of water. If we go down to the 1.28 models, we're gonna save a significant amount. We're trying to get people to replace those old three and a half gallon per flush toilets with new ones that use 1.28. We offer $100 back for people who replace old toilets with new ones. Did everybody get to look at this? These shower heads look pretty standard, um, but those use two gallons per minute. Most shower heads use three and a half to four. This plant is special. Uh, the site is special. It has uh, two treatment plants on the same site, one lime softening that's going back about 50 plus years. One is a nanofiltration plant, which is only five years old. Uh, the nanofiltration plant is a LEED Gold certified plant. That means it's a uh, green building. It is the only LEED Gold water plant in the world, so it sets up Dania Beach as having something that's pretty special. The concept behind the plant goes back for about 12 years. And what we are trying to do with that is blend water coming from the county system with the city's wells. Uh, the county system has quite a bit more color and a lot more organics in it, so the traditional lime softening doesn't really work very well for that. And it's something we've seen at many other municipalities. We've done a number of analyses, and uh, we have a plant now that's 5 million gallons. That should take Dania to whatever build out it could possibly have with the facilities. We're upgrading the water plant right now on the lime softening side, so it'll be current just like the membrane plant is as well. Today was a very interesting day. Um, I learned more about water than I actually knew and how it was distributed throughout our community here. And I also learned how to conserve more water. I never knew that water was so you know, important. I thought I was just gonna see how water is and then just, I thought it was an easier process than it actually is. I knew it came from a plant, but I didn't think it had this many stages. It was fun, it was lit. Uh, I learned a lot about water and um, how you have to save water because it's good for the environment and the community. They definitely learned a lot about uh, water conservation, um, how to shorten their showers, um, and how to just cut the usage. So it's been a great day. Uh, we've had kids here all day uh, trying to show them the water plant. Uh, it was great fun. I hope they learned a lot. Hope that uh, you that are watching this learned a lot as well and appreciate the opportunity to provide some tours and some education on the water plant here in Dania Beach. Thank you, City of Dania Beach, for having this awesome opportunity for my students to um, really connect what they're learning in the classroom to the real world application. Thank you for having me here.